It is a great pleasure and a great honor to welcome one Jason Benoit to this program. He is a wonderful country musician from Newfoundland, Canada. How do you do, Jason? Thank you for joining us. Great. How are you doing? I'm doing Thanks for having me. <laughs> so uh, what have you been up to these past uh, few days, weeks? Um, I've been, uh, it's, it's you know, pretty much festival season this time of year. So uh, I was, uh, there's a, a big festival uh, in Prince Edward Island uh, called um, Cavendish Beach Music Fest. And I actually ho uh, co-host, well, actually hosted the um, songwriters round for the three days of the festival. Uh, I did that uh, uh, in July. And I stayed over there with my family for a few weeks for a little vacation. And um, now I'm back here in Newfoundland. Got some sh I got a show coming up this weekend. And uh, just uh, one in Toronto coming up uh, at the end of the month. And it's just, just a, a time of year to be to be traveling and, and doing some festivals. And also doing a bunch of writing in between. So, uh, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's busy. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so tell me about uh, the upcoming shows that you have. Uh, I've got one, uh, this is actually a hometown show um, called the Sweetgrass Festival, and that's an indigenous uh, uh, Mi'kmaq festival um, in Stephenville, uh, Newfoundland, uh, and that's it's I'm just part of that. And um, uh, I've got one in Toronto at uh, Hastings, Ontario, uh, called Crooks County Country Fest. Uh, that's going to be with Aaron Goodwin. It should be fun. That's uh, on the 26th of August. And then I've got uh, uh, a show in Bonavista, Newfoundland at the Garrick Theater. And then a, um, and then a week after that, it's uh, the CCMA, uh, Canadian Country Music uh, Association Week. And um, I'm nominated for a, uh, an award this year for Alt Country Album of the Year. So I'll be going up for that and taking part of a, and a bunch of uh, events and, and showcases and all that good stuff. So yeah, very busy, busy for a little while. Yeah, very busy <laughs> for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I also have a, a radio show that I, I do now every week. Um, so that's, um, that's pre-recorded. So I don't have to be there live, but I can, I do it from home and I send it in. So <clears throat> that keeps me busy too, because I gotta, I'm always researching music and, and, and new stuff that's coming out and, and that's that's actually a lot of fun i enjoy that it's it's, it's a it's a guilty pleasure of mine it's, it's a lot of fun mm -hmm. i'm glad you're here so uh tell me about the uh, radio show that you're hosting that's called that's country and it's on uh 100.1 bay fm newfoundland at cornerbrook newfoundland mm -hmm. and uh, that's also it's available online at uh bayfm.ca anybody can listen you can listen to any radio station online now but it airs every saturday night at 9 p.m and uh, uh so yeah i've been doing that now i'm on the uh sixth episode uh that's coming out this saturday and uh yeah they they rebranded the station it used to be called uh, bay of islands radio but they rebranded to bay fm and <clears throat> they got a new manager and I've known Lenny, uh, the manager there for a long time. And he reached out to me and asked if I'd be uh, interested in, in doing my own show. It's a, it's a community based, uh, radio station and it's, uh, it's all volunteer. Uh, so I said hundred percent, that'd be, it'd be a lot of fun. So I'm reaching out to different artists and, uh, getting them to send in sound bites, uh, that I, uh, that I play, uh, before I play their song. And, um, and yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a Saturday night show. So it's a upbeat show. Lots of fun. Mm -hmm. okay so um is it like a is it like a music only show or do you have like yes. a talking segments too oh, okay well the talking segments are pretty short uh they're probably between 30 seconds to a minute long uh -huh. and there's uh probably two in the whole show and then the rest i'm i'm playing uh just whatever music i want to play uh I, I i usually stick to traditional sounding country and indie folk uh, the new indie folk kind of country like Sergio Simpson or uh, uh, Tyler Childers, Brian, you know, uh, Zach Bryan, stuff like that. So, um, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's mainly music. Uh, it's basically, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the DJ for the hour. So, <laughs> I see. Yeah. Um, this uh, podcast that you're listening to is actually um, started out as a radio show. Um, oh, cool. So I was in Peterborough, Ontario for some years as an undergraduate and 
uh, I started the show to basically talk about music and play music and play as That's in, awesome. yeah, curate. But um, yeah. over time, I wanted to uh, be more of a talk based interview format. So here we are. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Congrats. Yeah, <laughs> and I hear that you're meeting uh, Aaron Goodman, who I actually recently had him on this program. So if you don't mind, uh, tell him I said hi. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Actually, the the show that I'm doing in, in Ontario at that, that festival uh, coming up on the 2060s, uh, it's going to be with him. He's going to be part of it, too. So uh, I'll see him on the 26th. I've known him for... Uh, I'd say a few, oh my God, I'd say about five years now, but actually I, I, um, my song, a lot about a little, actually he wrote that one. Um, wow. so I, I got to, uh, I got to release one of his songs, uh, that he wrote. So that was, uh, so I just collab with him a little bit on that. And, uh, ever since got to, got to know him a bit. So yeah, it's a great dude. Good guy. Yeah. So great music. I think he's supposed to be at Devon, Alberta this week, right? There's a there's a festival, Devon Fest that he's uh this he's week. Doing. I'm not sure where he's due this week, but yeah, should be should be a few days, like either before or after. But um, so tell me about your album, Time Traveler. Yeah, the album. Um, actually, I think we started writing that back in. 20 i'd say 2020 um as as was pro it was just after the uh the whole pandemic thing happened and uh you know th things started getting uh, shut down and and music you know it, it just dried up nobody was allowed to play anywhere and it was uh i think for a lot of artists it was a a time to just reflect on on the kind of music you you like and i think a lot of people just went back to their happy place because it the, the, was so stressful at the time in the world that people just i find that a lot of artists um recorded kind of different music during during the pandemic and and uh and it was the same for me and um so actually i i got to the, the majority of the album i wrote it with my my buddy jerry uh, Jerry Foot in uh, in Prince Edward Island, uh, where I was this past uh, couple of months there, and um, uh, we hadn't, we, you know, we, he's not a songwriter. He, he owns a daycare, so <laughs> him and his wife. So uh, so they, uh, we're just buddies, you know. I've known him for fifteen years, and uh, when I go over there, I usually stay there instead of getting hotels and stuff. And we hang out, and and he comes to the festivals with me and and helps me out and. Uh, you know, we just hang out and have a few beer and, and play some music and just enjoy music. And he's a creative dude. So um, during the pandemic, it was like in, in uh, when things opened up again, like briefly at certain points, myself and my family went over there uh, for for vacation. And uh, so I hung out with him and his family. And, uh, you know, that's that's where we wrote a lot of the songs. And, and I didn't I, we didn't even really plan on releasing them. We just. We just did it for fun and uh the music um you know we hadn't planned on putting it on an album but then um before the pandemic just just as the pandemic was starting uh my my label and my management my management was actually my label and that was uh nick nunez at victory music group he decided to step away from the industry and focus on his family and just his own personal life at the time uh, we had a released an album, a Revolution Part One, and that was pretty much I had completed its cycle. And then he hadn't, uh, he didn't want to go back into to releasing any more music at that time. So I was, I was without a, ma a manager and and a, and a label at the time. So, uh, so it was pretty much up to me on uh, what to do and which direction to go in. So at the time, um, I, I had written all those songs with Jerry. And we had a good catalog and, and, and we had a bunch to choose from. Uh, so we said, well, why don't we release an album ourselves and produce it ourselves and, and, and uh, see where it goes. I mean, we had nothing to lose at that point and we love the songs. I love the songs. And you know, we figured, well, if, if I like them, they're a little more traditional sounding country, which is how we're, what kind of music I grew up with. And, um, you know, released, uh, we released the album uh, in two parts. The first part was in 2021, and that was a, a time traveler side A. 
and then um, uh, actually 2022, sorry, uh, Time Traveler Side A, and then 2023 in March, we released the full album, Time Traveler. And uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, with that, actually, before, before I go too far ahead, we did release it, but in 2022, 2021, sorry, the end of the year 2021, sorry to keep everything, track of everything. I, uh, I went to, to the Canadian Country Music Week uh, in uh, Ontario, and um, I had worked, I had released a song with Kendra K. Uh, Kendra K, uh, re- uh, his manager, reached out to me and asked to see if I would do a duet on a, on a Christmas song called How Great Thou Art. And then, so uh, I did that. So I had met him then. But then when we went to the CCMAs that year, um, I was there without a manager and a label, and but I had a, an album. I had a CD that, not a CD, but I had an album finished that you know, we were pretty happy with. So I got the, um, uh, you know, I, I talked to, to Jeremy, Jeremy, who is my new management now. So Johnson Talent Management is the name of the company. And, and uh, actually, so he heard the album and he loved it. So he got on board for management and then we ended up after that we ended up getting the label uh jayward artist group who was distributed uh, through the or- the orchard um they uh jumped on board to distribute the album uh so um and then now it's uh you know i had ended up with five ecma east coast music award nominations and five music newfoundland award nominations and then uh, now i've got the ccma nomination for uh, our, um alternative country album of the year so it's uh it ended up working out pretty good in the end uh taking a chance you know we didn't really know where it was going to go but we took a chance on it so sorry that was a long story man (laughs) that's a loaded question (laughs) it's a it's a good and long album so it deserves a long story i think (laughs) and congratulations very much for receiving all those nominations man thank you thank you very blessed Mm-hmm. Yeah, tell me about the title of the album. <clears throat> about the album, uh, the title, the song, just about the music. Oh, with the title. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, well, we had. I've always, I always wanted to write a song uh, called "Time Traveler." I'm a sci-fi fan. Mm-hmm. I love, I love anything to do with you know either sci-fi or or time travel or all that stuff. So space and so. Um, I thought, well, it'd be a cool idea to write a song called Time Traveler, but in the concept that you know, we can go anywhere at any point in time in our minds, just in our in our memories. And that's what the, uh, the I wrote the song, uh, me and Jerry wrote the song Time Traveler. And then um, we thought because the, the vibe of the, the album was such a throwback, kind of a 90s uh, country vibe, 80s, 90s country vibe that you know, why don't we call the album Time Traveler? So, because it kind of makes sense to, to the, with the vibe of the album. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, um, it's really fascinating because um, sci-fi, science fiction, and country, either music or film, it's not like, um, you know, it's not something that mesh together. No. <laughs> I think there's like Close Encounters of the Third Kind or Signs by M. Night Shyamalan. But yeah. um, that yeah, you know, there's not much crossover between those things. No, 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 definitely not. Uh, I just it's just me as a person. Uh, that's just the stuff that I'm interested into, and so I just carried that over into naturally into to my writing. So I'm glad to hear it. And the songs are <laughs> uh, thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Tell me about some of the inspirations that goes into uh, the music. Well, for this album in particular. Uh, at the time, for about a year before we started writing it, I was listening to a lot of classic country, uh, but like the outlaw country. So, uh, and Kate Williams Jr. and Waylon Jennings and Willie Nelson and all that stuff. Was uh, <clears throat> I'd recently got a a record player, and um, and so I started getting trying to find older records and just listening to, you know, different full, full albums of, of, uh, you know, some of the artists that I always loved. And, uh, 
so at that time that was a big influence for me for the album actually uh especially hank jr uh just because the i love that i love the mix of of blues and country just that rock rock uh southern rock kind of a vibe and uh there's a few songs on there if you listen to it kind of kind of has that vibe like a million country boys and um uh, your friday night and stuff like that like that's a that's uh, like a direct influence from hank jr but um yeah, i just love that i i love the old i like the soul you know the soul of old country i just love how much emotion uh when i was a kid uh you know listen to um we had an am radio station that my parents used to listen to all the time and that was it was all uh basically classic country and i think that had a big influence on me but but it was um it was the so it was always the emotion that that affected me like even as a kid i remember feeling stuff from music and just having uh you know just having a uh, emotional connection to the songs that i liked and um it was it was um yeah, and I think that's what led me into actually, you know, to learning how to play. And, and it was part of my family, too. My family, uh, you know, played guitar and <clears throat> sang. My bro older brother sang and, and played guitar. He taught me how to play guitar. And so it wasn't the family anyway. But, but um, yeah, the, um, you know, there's, there's just there's a lot of influence to, as to why I would have wanted to release this album. This is the album I always wanted to release anyway. Like, this is sort of the album that, this is the, when I first started the industry or even when I first started playing guitar, like this is the kind of music I loved and this is the kind of music I listened to. So I think if I had gone through my career and not released an album like this, I would have been felt like I wasn't fulfilled regardless, whatever I, whatever achievements I, I would have gotten or not. Uh, because this, like, this is the album for me that, that I, I, you know, I always wanted to release. It's the, just the type of music and the vibe and and I love I love that style but so now I, I got it kind of I got it out of my system now so I'm, I'm kind of looking at different things and <laughs> it's been uh I've been you know it's been three years we've been in total kind of working on this album so I'm looking forward to moving on to the different sounds and so we're, we're working on new music and stuff now but but this album uh this album for sure is is always gonna be a special one for me <laughs> And I'm excited to hear about your new music. Um, so as you've said, the album took a pretty long gestation process. You started working on it in 2020 and uh, the album, parts of it came out in 22 and the whole thing came out this year. So um, how did release day feel like for you? The release date? Yeah. Yeah. Like how did you feel? What was your... Like, well, that was, it was actually my idea to do it that way, um, to release it in two parts. And mm -hmm. I think it's because for one thing, it's just the way uh, the streaming platforms work now mm -hmm. is that you, you um, it's geared towards singles. So oh, yeah. if you release one, if you release one song, it, you know, it, it, that's the focus track and that's where, you know, they'll look at that song and say, okay, I, I, you know, we think this will, the, the curators put it in certain playlists, right? If you release a whole album at once, um, you could have three, so three songs off of that album as, as a single to go to radio, but just because it goes to radio, say six months or a year down the road, any of the songs off the album, it, it doesn't mean that it's a new song on the streaming platform. So they don't pick that, pick it up as a, uh as a new track to put in uh, to add to different uh, playlists so you only got one kick at the can with with streaming platforms so you really have to uh, and i think a lot of uh, a lot of artists are doing that now you release a single a single a single then you release an ep and then mm -hmm. you release another couple singles then an album or something like that you know like just just and that's the only way to really <clears throat> to do it so that it you get the most impact at at uh, streaming platforms so that you know, you get the 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 chance to, for more people to hear it, basically. So we, that's what you know, we decided on, and it's. Uh, I think it ended up working out pretty good. So, yeah, um, I'm a frequent user of Spotify, and I think there are slight differences between Spotify and Apple Music in that 
uh, one platform, Apple Music, I find favors the album over the singles, and you know, Spotify, I think, okay. vice versa. And mm-hmm. one thing that it's kind of a good sign is that uh, because of how the streaming platforms work, uh, the EP is making a comeback um, in the pre-streaming age because you uh, because people have CDs and vinyls. You mm-hmm. you either have one single or a full length album, and EPs are not there, which uh, yeah, I'm glad it's making a comeback. Yeah, and I think it, I think it's just convenient all around for mm-hmm. artists these days. I mean, because and especially because of of the style of music, this day and age, like it's obviously everything is going so much faster. People's attention spans are really short, and and I feel like that's the only thing that doing this album this way kind of hurt me. It didn't hurt me. It's just that it, I think it, it could it took away from the effectiveness, I think, of it is that in, a, in, a, in one way is that, you know, if you're releasing two albums and two, uh, two basically two parts in two different years, um, you know, people, I think ha- if they like the first album, their atten- their attention spans are you know so much so that you know they want something different you know all, all the time just just because that's just the way the social media is set up right now right so um i think that's i think that's the only thing about you know if you're if you're going to release an album a full full length album it's it's um and it's it, it in my opinion this album is a concept album mm-hmm. so because it's more of a traditional vibe, right? If if it was all like if it's all modern country anyway, it doesn't then it's not going to really matter. But where the whole album <clears throat> is all traditional sounding kind of country, that's the only thing that I think maybe it would have been better to release as one full album in one year, and then you know move on back to whatever sound you know I'm trying next right because i i mean i i started off i mean i've been this is my 10th year in the industry and i've uh you know i I started off doing uh more pop leaning country and um as the time went on just that that traditional country sound pulled me back just what i've been you know so releasing singles like uh for example the first one was slow hand that had more of a that i released back in 20 18 that had more of a traditional vibe and then you know we released the album and it was a mix of everything that was probably only one of the only ones on there that was more traditional sounding and then and then i released a lot about a little in 2019 and that was way more that was only one single that was way more traditional sounding and then then the album came out like it felt like i had to get this out of my system because it just it was coming it was coming eventually but um yeah like i said the i think the I think if you're going to do a full album and it's not a concept album, it's just, you know, modern pop country. I think you can do it and I think it'd be fine that you can split it up over a couple of years or do whatever you need to do. But in my situation, I don't know if it really hurt, but I feel personally that I would have probably liked it. No, looking back now that I probably would have done it over, you know, one, one release at one point for the whole album instead of two but uh, it's hard to say because it you know it's it's still working so i don't know i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> okay so um do you find that social media uh, has been a net good for you as an artist oh i think yeah it's good for everybody it's just the you know it's 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 just tapping into the algorithms and and uh you know, everyone's trying to get everyone's attention and it's hard. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, but it's great. I mean, it's, that's what it's all about now. So it's, it's all social media uh, in, in so many ways. Uh, just keep, you keep in constant contact with your fans and, and, uh, you know, try to, you know, tr- it's hard. It's, it's hard in a way. I mean, it's hard to continually, release things to social media that you think that they're going to like or you know so it's uh it's it's interesting it's a different world because you're kind of everyone's a slave to it you know doesn't matter who you are i guess <laughs> compared to well i was in i was uh, that was ever since i started it was always social media so um because i 
uh, my first single came out in 2013. So it would, there would have been always, uh, you know, social media was always a part of the equation in my, in, in my, uh, my business. So, um, uh, I think, I, I think I personally, uh, I'm probably getting to know how to do it a little better. So that's just, that's just nice. Yeah. So you mentioned that this is your 10th year in the music business. So congratulations on passing the double digit mark. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, so um, I wonder if um, uh, the, Im the importance of longevity in the business, uh, I wonder if that is in any way uh, transcends or is more important than say intrinsic talent. Do you have any thoughts on that? Then I'm sorry. I, I you have your oh, screen frozen. Uh, yeah, the you know uh, whether longevity is more important than talent in the midst. Well, talent is always first. I mean, I think it's important for any artist to be talented. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, longevity. I don't know. I think it's just, I think it comes down to when you run out of money and no one's interested, then that's it. You're just done. <laughs> that's what I've always felt. I've always said, if as long as I've got a team that's, you know, going to bat for me and interested in pushing me as an artist, and then I'll be happy to, you know, to, to, to roll with it because I mean, it's, it's as an artist, it's, you're just as good as your team. That's a hundred percent. I mean, I've no, I know artists who are phenomenal, but, you know, they're, they're not, I think, I don't think they are where they should be because of, there's a lot of different reasons, obviously, but, you know, team is a huge part of the, in, of the industry. I mean, if, if you've got a man, if you've got management that, you know, doesn't know anybody or doesn't have contacts or is not friendly, anything like you, you could have a manager who's just not a nice dude or people don't want to be around it's simple as that. I mean, it's, uh, um, because I know that from experience, by the way, but that <laughs> that uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, that, that's gonna hurt you. So I mean, that's a that's a big part of it. So for longevity, I think for me is just I've always had a team that went to bat for me, and you know I didn't always have the best team, but I always had the team that believed in me, which is nice. You know, now I feel like I've got a an incredible team, and they're you know they believe in me and they're really good at what they do. So, I mean, that really helps uh, a lot, I think. So, and I, I think that's why, that's one of the main reasons why I got nominated this year for a, a CCMA because um, uh, it's just because of the, the, the connections that they made and, and, you know, going to all the events with them and, and just meeting new people and, I mean, it's, I'm personally not going to walk up to a random person and just start talking. That's just not my personality, you know, but, uh, but if you're, if your manager knows somebody, you know, they'll introduce you and then, you know, you're all, it's all like, it's all networking. This whole industry is about networking and, <clears throat> and uh, you know, just having the best team to help you network is, is crucial. And that's how I've been around. I think as long as I've been. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've uh, I've always thought that um, you know from the outside perspective that you know talent gets you in the door, but you know mm -hmm. factors that are very much outside of your talent and your musical abilities uh, exist, uh, and they may work with you favorably or not, and and that depends on your stay in the uh, business, right? One hundred percent, definitely. That makes uh, yeah total sense. Okay. So uh, you mentioned being a family man. So how do you balance the life of a musician with that of a, a father? I think, I think, uh, well, one of the things you meant uh, the, uh, as another part of the last question, uh, longevity, I think living where I live, I live in Newfoundland and I live close, close to where I grew up. Basically my, my wife, lives next to her parents and her family and and um that makes a huge difference i mean we could have packed up and moved to, to you know ontario or nashville or you know trying to make it there but i think it would have been a lot harder because myself i mean i can travel I, most of the everything i do is i travel i mean for the most part of it so if i'm not there anyway then 
why would I move my family to somewhere where they don't have a solid, you know, foundation around them? You know, it's, it just make it so much harder and it's more expensive to live in cities as opposed to where I live. I mean, it's I, where I live right now, it's very cheap and it, that helps a lot because when business isn't as busy as you want it to be, then, you know, you can, you can get by a lot easier than if you're, you know, you're paying $2,500 a month rent up in a city somewhere. So, um, so I think that's a, that's a huge part of it. I mean, just, just having my home here in Western Newfoundland as a foundation uh, to if we're, where I can go and do whatever I need to do musically anywhere um, uh, that helps, I think, me be with my family more it helps uh uh it helps them that just uh be with their friends and family and just feel comfortable it's all about you know just making sure everybody's happy and and uh and, and then that makes it all work out on the on the end right with, with family and stuff like that so i wonder if uh because of your you know touring schedule which involves you traveling from one city to the next um does uh, living in a you know semi secluded or you know less densely populated area like say the suburbs or the rural area um, help? Uh, does it help with? Yeah, with... like uh, you know, I guess um, decompressing. Be... Oh, a hundred percent. Oh, definitely. It's like um, yeah. I mean, I mean, I live right by the ocean. And I've got uh, the view of the ocean right in front of me and then the mountains are behind me. So it's, I feel like I need that, you know, it's a part of, it's always been a part of my life and it's, it's nice to have it, you know, have to be in this area just where it's not crazy. It's not like you're always, you know, you're not part of the everyday hustle and bustle of living in a city. Like for me, it's, and my family, my wife, uh, it's important that we we live in a place like this is because it's uh because when it gets busy for me it gets busy uh and and me i i am not a i am not a uh, normally you know extroverted person um that's not it was never who i was I, I i liked it my alone time and i like my you know i need my my own time to do my own stuff and i think I, I am secluded from the rest of the country world and the music industry a little bit, but I mean, we got the internet. It's not like, it's not like we, we can't do stuff online or interviews online. Like, like we're doing now. It's really, it's, it's not, I don't think it's near as big a, an issue as uh, it used to be before the internet and, and the connections that we have now. <laughs> You know, uh, people like um, Aaron and others, like they believe that they they should move to Nashville, which is where everything happens. Uh, yeah. yeah. Or to, yeah, uh, I guess uh, as a advantageous career move. And I yeah. guess for people like you, it's the opposite, right? You, you need to stay, you know, further away from the epicenter as possible. Well, I think everybody is, everybody is different. I mean, everybody's got their own story and, and can do their own thing. I mean, I probably, if I wasn't married when I started the, you know, professionally in the industry, I probably would have moved to Nashville or somewhere bigger. Right. But I mean, you just gotta, you gotta roll with what you got, you know, you can't, uh, can't make something uh, work if it's, if it's not for you, you know, so everyone's different. Everybody's got their own story and, and, and uh, you know, Aaron's doing great. I love them. I probably could have had more success if I, I, uh, you know, moved somewhere else, but I mean, I'm completely happy and, with my career and, and the things that I've accomplished. And again, I've been, I'm still doing it after 10 years full time. Uh, so, I mean, I can't complain. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a lucky dude, I think. <laughs> I mean, the Nashville is a beautiful place. I've been there and I love it. I love the people. Uh, I love the people and I love the vibe. It's a very cool vibe. And um, again, it's just, uh, you know, I guess I'm, I'm a little bit of a uh, outlier, I guess. I just, I've, I do my own thing and 
that's that's just the way it is, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a personal decision, right? Different strokes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, how have you gotten used to um, the life on the road thus far? I'm 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 not crazy busy. I mean, if y'all if the U.S. like is crazy busy when it comes to touring, you can tour the U.S. as much as you want. Like you're talking you know, mm -hmm. 250 dates a year or something like that if you really wanted to. Uh, Canada is not quite like that. It's um, it's it's a lot. Uh, you know, it's either you're you're you you're touring, but when you tour, it's regionally. Because, mm -hmm. because so you you know you do say the east coast first or you do ontario because ontario is its own thing or you do it west uh i haven't been a you know a huge uh touring artist i mean I've, i'm way more of a recording artist than a touring artist mm -hmm. um and that's just the uh that uh, not saying i didn't, wouldn't want to it's just that the opportunity hasn't been there to to do it you know, it's just, uh, there's a lot of risk in, in, in touring. You, I mean, you really don't know. I mean, if, unless you're like hot and you're top of the, top of the charts or something like that, then, I mean, you're going to go out and because you, you know, people are going to show up, but I mean, if you're, if you're counting on people to show up, not saying that I, that they wouldn't, but I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's all business at the end of the day when it comes to touring, you know, it's a, it's a business decision. Is it worth, are you going to come back home at the end of the day with, uh, you know, ten thousand dollars in the red or are you going to be you know you're going to have money in your pocket right so it's uh i find personally myself it's it's been a, i know a lot of artists that that do tour a lot and that's great but myself i haven't been uh i haven't toured a lot and i don't i'm happy with with the amount of touring i do i mean uh i obviously everybody like probably a little more but uh it all really depends on where you, what your career is doing at the time and uh so yeah it's uh i've got the wife i'm at my wife and kids here anyway so it's if i'm not touring i'm 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 or doing you know promo stuff i'm i'm with them and doing the the dad thing so <laughs> i don't even really think of it you know it's just uh either way i'm i'm happy so it's uh it, touring is is what it is okay at the um, end of the day but i do enjoy I, you know obviously it's a, it's a part of my career and I think festival season is, is way bigger than, than anything else. Like the summers are, are the, probably the busiest time of year for me, just because that's, that's when the fest, all the big festivals happen and, uh, and small festivals. And that's when people seem to want to come out more to see artists. But um, I think now too, the whole, it's, it's all changed since, uh, since you know, COVID. Um and the right in Canada, I know it's the it, the um, economy is just uh, not where it was, you know, before COVID. And uh, I I'm seeing personally, and I know a lot of artists who are saying the same thing that numbers have fallen like like crazy uh, uh, because I think they're saving their money to go to something bigger instead of going seeing one artist, uh, you know, or two artists. Uh, at a show they'd they'd save their money and and probably go to a festival where they can see 10 artists you know and and they, they get a bigger bang for their buck that way but i've yeah I've, I've definitely noticed since the pandemic is is over that uh well for one thing ticket prices have gone up mm -hmm. but uh and so has the price of everything so people can't afford to do it all you know so it's uh it's a it's tough uh I think it's a little challenging right now for, for any artist, not only myself, but for every artist out there to, to get butts and seats when, uh, when there's not a lot of, you know, when, when the inflation has gone crazy and uh, they have to decide whether the, to go to a, a show on the weekend or, or put some extra gas in their, in their vehicle. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I do mm -hmm. notice that uh, music festivals have gone up ever since, uh, you know, things starting to open up there. There's yeah. actually one that happened recently in Budapest, uh, which is close enough to Vienna. Um, I think uh, people who the people who can afford to do tours these days are like really big names. You got obviously yeah, James the big names, yeah, who's yeah. doing her thing, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and that's again, that's people will pay for that, you know. Mm -hmm. 
and then uh but like probably smaller artists who who they can wait to see they'll wait right yeah yeah and, and it makes sense <laughs> that you know what they can only do what they can do makes sense <laughs> So do you, do you expect the uh, music economy, so to speak, to, you know, uh, to jumpstart back again anytime soon? Uh, I don't, I can't see it changing in the foreseeable future right now, uh, unless something, you know, major happens in the industry. And, th and that's for that very reason, unless it's basically because of the economy and the, in the, the world as it is today, it's just out of the hands of myself or anybody in the industry. It's just going to be what it's going to be for now until, you know, until something happens where yeah, the economy gets better, you know, that's, but that's all I can see right now. Uh, when there's more money in people's pockets, People have more money for entertainment. At the end of the day, music is entertainment, and and it's it's not a a hundred percent a need. You know, it's a it's a it's something that people love, and it's uh. But at the end of the day, I mean, p p you got to put your money wh where it matters most. So, <laughs> I think it's gonna I think it's gonna take a while uh, before that comes back. And I have no I'm not I'm not a you know financial expert or, or <laughs> so I don't know. When that's going to be, I have no idea. Your guess would be as good as mine on that one. <laughs> no, um, I'm curious to hear about how country music factor into your upbringing, because um, as I found out, you are a proud uh, Indigenous Canadian of the uh, Mi'kmaq Nation. So uh, tell me about that. Yep. Uh, music, country music, like I said earlier, I mean, I we had a, a country music station in where i lived it was an am station uh that played basically all classic country so we listened to that all the time uh when i was a kid and um my parents uh, listened to a lot of country we could have get togethers on the weekend uh you know every every so often with family like family get togethers and and uh you know somebody played guitar and sang and or there was different people playing this instruments and different things like that. And, and it was, it was normally either East coast, you know, Celtic traditional kind of style uh, music or, or country music. And uh, uh, that's where, you know, that's, and, and I just gravitated towards country. And I think it's just, uh, I, again, it, it came down to fulfilling some kind of a, an emotional uh, ex expression, you know, that's uh, that's that's where I could express myself best in country music and uh, as a indigenous artist, I mean, um, we here in my in my family and the community itself are just rediscovering their indigenous roots. I mean, we um, uh, it was suppressed for so long and and uh, that and that when I grew up, we didn't even really know that we were indigenous you know it was just uh we were just uh like everyone else you know basically and we, and, and there was uh traditions say that were passed on that we all did but we didn't think of it as indigenous or different you know we just we all did it it was just part of our community and just different things you know like um just uh you know either how to, how to hunt a certain way or, you know, uh, uh, different, um, uh, different, we'll just say different ways of, uh, say telling something about the moon or, or like growing at a certain time of year or, you know, just different things, like things that we knew about, but we didn't associate with being indigenous, you know, um, uh, because it, it, it was again it was it was really suppressed in our community uh especially here uh, where we lived i mean it was it was really it was a taboo thing to be considered a french uh, uh, indigenous person it was a uh, you know so just people didn't recognize that side of uh, of themselves right so uh, again it's only been in the last i say five years that that uh well they created the Alapu First Nation Mi'kmaq band that we have here, and uh, 
and uh, it's, so people are finally trying to get back to their roots and try to rediscover their ancestry and stuff like that. So uh, that's uh, <clears throat> so. It, so it's a uh, you now it's been part of my life. You know, obviously since I was born because it's in the blood, and it's both my parents actually had their uh, their uh, indigenous status. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's more of a spiritual thing, you know, it's just, mm -hmm. uh, that's where the intuition came from, I think for, uh, <laughs> for the music and, and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. yeah, um, it's, uh, I guess country music, uh, in my view, you know, it's not easily associated with, um, I guess, indigenous Canadian heritage or indigenous heritage mm -hmm. of any kind, even in America, um. And I wonder, how do you uh, bring that part of your, I guess, your family into, I guess, your own music? Well, I don't, I don't really think the, like, I don't write from that perspective. Like, I'm not releasing Indigenous music, you know, it's, I'm Indigenous and I'm releasing music. So it's not the same, right? Um, I mean, I... I mean, I, I love that part of who I am and, and uh, it's a, it is who I am, but I don't release music or write music with that in mind. Like, that's not what I, that's not, I've never done that. And I will probably never do that. I mean, it's just a, it's a part of who I am, but I mean, it doesn't mean you have to, because it's who you are, you have to, you yeah. know, identify with that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I see. Yes. So um, I got to know you and your music through uh, Mallory Johnson, who I recently mm -hmm. had on this program. Um, and she's also part of the Newfoundland uh, country music scene. And I wonder to what extent yeah. um, are you involved in that uh, scene as a whole? In the Newfoundland scene? Yeah. Well, I mean, Mallory, um, when I was, I, when I was first, um, I was probably 18. Uh, there was, there's something here uh, close to where I live called the Stephenville theater festival. And it's a, um, it's, it's, it happens every summer and people from all over Canada uh, come in and they're, they become, they're, they're, they do a part of it. So there, there's, uh, there's all different shows and they, um, you know, and they basically perform in different theater productions uh, and they, and people who are in school, they like go into school for theater or different things like that, or production. They learn about all like about producing and, and doing shows and stuff like that. So uh, anyway, I was a part of that show uh, back when I was 18 and Mallory was in that as well. So we did a, uh, uh, we did a country show together actually. So that's where I first got to meet Mallory. She's a, she's a great person. And I've, I've, I've seen and, and uh, talked to her many times since and, <laughs> and I, and it's it's really cool that we're both nominated this year for the same award, uh, old <laughs> country. Yeah, she's uh yeah very very cool that we're both uh, from Newfoundland and that I know her so well. And we have a history that we're both nominated for the same award. It's really cool. But um, uh, the uh, the country music industry in Newfoundland is is not as big as you might think. I mean, there's a people like country music here. Again, we've I've been listening to it all my life. But say new country is not huge. I don't think it's not as uh, so. I I think uh, I think people relate a lot more with more traditional sounding country in Newfoundland. Um, uh, I think or folk, you know, folk country, root more rootsy uh, country. Like that's what people I think really uh, like more than pop country here. Uh, there's a lot of it's a big fan obviously a lot of big fans of, of country everywhere um, so but I think it, it, I'm talking about more on the lines of uh, who would go see a show uh, you know something like that like uh, a, a touring say something or if there's anybody say from the U.S. that comes up then a lot of people go all the time but but yeah uh, no um, yeah so that there's I mean we've got the um, there's the East Coast Country Music Association that recently just started, actually, because we've never had our own uh, country music association on the East Coast of Canada. 
So uh, there's one now that uh, out of Halifax and it's um, basically, you know, it's, it's, it's our own country music association. So it's really nice to have uh, because uh, I mean, we have the East coast uh, music association, but uh, country is, you know, not high on the list in that association uh, for whatever reason. And, um, and so it's, so I think now more than ever that country music on the, East Coast and particularly Newfoundland is really, uh, you know, I think it's uh, being recognized and uh, appreciated a lot more than, you know, before. I mean, when I first started, um, I released a song called Crazy Kind of Love. And I remember that they were going to play it on a certain radio station. I'm not going to say which one, but it was out west in, in Alberta, I think. And then they, um, the the dj before they played the song uh he said you know here's a song from jason Bemo from newfoundland uh and and they and he pretty much said like um odd combination to have country music come out of newfoundland you know <laughs> but uh but i mean again like country music has always been a part of my life so i, I really does i don't think you you can be from anywhere and be a country music fan or, or sing country music or, or whatever. So uh, I think we've, we've come a long way since uh, say even in the last 10 years to uh, represent country music in Newfoundland for sure. Yeah. Um, Mallory's a wonderful, sweet person and her yeah, uh, surprise party is really good too. I, I listen to it and I like it a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah. She's great. So how do you, uh, without assuming you know preference of any kind how do you like tell between a traditional country to and you know a pop country one how can you tell the difference between <laughs> um by the instruments basically mm -hmm. and and how it's uh and, and the and the chord structure um and the like the beat there's just so many different ways there's so many different things I mean, a, a lot of a lot of you know pop country now sounds a lot like hip hop, or uh, have has a lot more of a you know a pop uh, sound overall. I mean, you all you'd have to do is take the the fiddle or the banjo out of the song, and and it could be just as well on the on the top forty pop station, right? So I think that's the difference. And traditional country is a lot more. Uh, just root sounding so it sounds more like more traditional country music uh, uh, you know simple more simple progressions uh, chord progressions uh, a lot more major chord progressions rather than minor chord progressions not a lot of minor chords used in old country it was used very sparingly and um, uh, and a lot of course like a lot more just pedal steel and and fiddle and uh, you know, those are the instruments that basic mainly used in, in traditional country music as opposed to today where it's used, but it's used kind of like a, a sparingly just to, to make you make, you know, make it more a little, little more country uh, out of out of a pop track, basically. But uh, and, and the way things are sung as well. I mean, if you sing with a twang or, or anything like that, then obviously it's going to be country as opposed to. Depends on your accent, I guess, <laughs> at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, there's there's a bunch of ways, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I should probably make my preferences known in that. Um, I think when when uh, country music takes a pop turn in that he's, he's trying to make itself more appealing to, I guess, regular pop music listeners, it, it uh, drives itself into becoming more of a niche genre in that you know, country music starts to actually lose its pop appeal amongst uh, pop listeners and maybe country listeners too because of all these mm -hmm. influences from non-country music. Meanwhile, um, both the music style and the lyrical content of traditional country music, uh, whether you're talking about George Jones or Tammy Wynette and uh, those people, uh, carries a, a universal appeal and therefore that music becomes like a more universal and thus more popular genre yeah that makes sense yeah 100 percent. but uh i mean i think what drives the sound of country music at the time is obviously trends 
mm-hmm. the trends of what's happening at the time. But it comes down to the at the end of the day that this is a business and the label obviously wants to make the most money. Mm-hmm. So in order to do that, you follow the trends. And if it's more pop sounding, that's what they do. You know, it's just the way it goes. Or they, you know, they take an artist who may not normally sound as pop sounding and try to, you know, just try to make their music a little more pop sounding. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, no, I agree. I mean, it's, it's the, but I think it's, I think fans are smart. They're smarter than that. Um, um, they don't, and it's proven itself that fans are finding music now from indie folk and country artists and and they're blowing up um uh what's the new guy uh oliver anthony that just oh, yeah. got, who has he's, that song awesome. uh, like like that's crazy like yeah. that would ne- like like i've never ever seen that happen before like it, complete nobody knew who this guy was mm-hmm. he's got the number one song on itunes and it the song is going to uh be released as number one on the top a billboard top 100 uh chart in the states like that is cra- and it's literally just him and a guitar mm-hmm. like that's what the song is <laughs> it's great like that's nuts but i think that's going to show that that's where fans are that's the kind of music people are that will always gravitate towards it's it's a good story it's a song with a lot of soul and and I think that's what country music is based on. So I think that's why traditional music is always, you know, traditional country music is always going to have a place in country because I mean, that's what people love at the end of the day. It's just the way it's 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 presented or packaged. Like that's that's what's changing, right? So mm-hmm. yeah, uh, you mentioned uh, Stojo Simpson, which is a fantastic artist, and yeah. he's been yeah. sort of flying under the radar in regards to like mainstream pop charts but he's been doing this for years yeah oh my gosh well 2018 he won the grammy for country album of the year oh, which right, yeah. against you know tim mcgraw keith urban like everybody who was nominated that year he walked away with the grammy and people were like who, who is this guy like and when why right mm-hmm. but i mean like that's it i mean it's just uh that's that's um the soul, the the soul, and his music is, and, and the honesty is just undeniable. And it's just, uh, I think that's what people are. That's what people want. They want something that's real. You know, mm-hmm. they don't. Uh, everybody wants just uh, uh, honesty in, in in their music, and 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 the more real it is and honest, that's people people buy into it. It's it's great. That's mm-hmm. what people want. Yeah, I, I do see that uh, since you mentioned uh, Oliver Anthony, um, I do see that there's a succession of artists and their music that has made like a uh, headline in the United States. Uh, first, you start with Luke Combs covering Fast Cars by Tracy yeah. Chapman and um, with the Jason Aldean with that song, Try That in a Small Town. And That's then right, Oliver yeah. Anthony with that Richman, North of Richmond song. Mm-hmm. And I think while I'm glad to see that country music has uh, has uh, you know received this significant media attention, I fear that this kind of attention has been uh, uh, you know placed upon them because the political scene of the U.S. has gone has become so divided that these songs are you know like ammo in this uh, phony cultural war that they have over there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's. I don't, I don't know that, that I don't think that hurts. Mm-hmm. I think it, if anything, it's, you know, it just makes people listen to it and it, mm-hmm. and it brings attention to any kind of publicity is good publicity at the end of the day. Right. So it's great. I think it's really good because it's going to bring a lot more people into, you know, into that more, you know, soulful story driven, impactful music, which I think personally has been missing mm-hmm. from country for well I, it's not really not i think it's way better than it was but like the 2010s like from 2010 to 2020 was like for me it, it was you know there, there was some good there was so obviously i'm not going to throw the baby with the bath water the bath water but but uh but there, i mean i i just felt 
actually 2000 to 2010 i think that's the, that was the year that it was like people didn't know what they were doing and they they just they just made stuff sound like it was pop or hip hop sounding just for the sake of it and and they weren't doing it tastefully and mm -hmm. it was like for me like as a as a traditional country fan oh my gosh like i did i i never listened to new country at all like i never listened to it. i was all just put on like the white yokum or something like that like I just didn't, I didn't like it. I didn't care for it. And uh, so that's why it was hard for me, actually, when I first started um, to write new music, hip hop music and, and uh, pop country, right? That's, that's the first kind of music that I released. How do I do it so that I enjoy it? Because I didn't really like, I didn't, I didn't really like the new, like the new kind of country that was happening at the time. So I, um, uh, I did find I know I know that Jason Aldean had the uh, my kind of party album, mm -hmm. uh, and that was that for me was a at the time that that's the one that I I listened to and I was like yeah I, I like I like the soul in in the music you know and that's for me like just like Morgan Wallen now it's like Morgan Wallen knows how to how to do it knows how to put soul into his music and have meaningful lyrics and sure it does have you know a lot of his stuff does have a more of a a pop vibe but but everything else is there with it and it and i think that's why he's got so many fans it's like you have to have it all you know you have you can't just there's nothing fake about morgan wallen like that he is very he's an, an artist i think but probably one of my favorite modern country artists and uh and I think that's that's what I like about country now is that uh, I think we're heading in a really good direction. And I think it's uh, uh, it's soul wise. There's a lot more soul in country music than there than there was uh, in the last 15 years, and it's it's great. I think it's a we're getting to a really great place in, in the industry for for music. Oh, yeah, I can remember vividly the time when uh, there's like country EDM crossovers and for the <laughs> band Florida, Florida Georgia line was uh, yeah. really big. So uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a good sign. I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So final question, Jason, uh, what does music mean to you? <sighs> music is therapy. Um, when I was a kid, I was I was I was really emotional, you know, and I had I had a lot of a, a lot of uh, I was very I was very quiet. I was very you know I, I was very easily stressed out uh, as a as a teenager, like probably you know thirteen fourteen years old. And music for me was a was a a way of of uh, therapy for me. It was a uh, it was what I needed to to come out of my shell. It helped me all around uh, just become a better person. Uh, it opened me up to, uh, to to dealing with my own issues, uh, plus you know uh, helping others deal with theirs. And uh, I, I, music is the I think one of the top therapies that people don't realize as a therapy but it is i mean that's why people love music so much i think it helps people process their emotions and the, the stuff that they don't realize that they have going on inside of them and i think that's why music is so powerful and important that's why it's important to me because it helps me not 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 only as a you know i'm not only doing this because it's my career but it's it's also a it's, it's a way to help myself as well as others. So it's a, I think it helps all around. It's really great. Well, on that wonderful note, uh, thank you very much. Uh, country musician and multiple award nominee, Jason Benoit, for joining this show. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it.